Hello, everyone. My name is Monica Isabel Martinez. There I am uh, right there on the left hand side. I am an ad tech specialist. Uh, basically, uh, what that means is that I come out and I do workshops, uh, keynotes, um, typically either with schools or at uh, educational technology conferences. Uh, I'm also a graphic designer and I absolutely love design and photography. And it so happens that uh, in this video, we're gonna be talking about photo walks. So the idea here is to be able to get your students outdoors and into the community and learn more about its culture, its history, um, and so this example that you're gonna see is here from Austin, Texas, where I live. Um, and I pretty much just have gone out on many occasions to do different photo walks, whether it be that I'm looking for murals or street art or uh, sculptures. Uh, and sometimes the city will actually put on uh, street tours. And so I'll go out and I'll scout those out. But the idea is to really get your, your kids outdoors. You could do this as a class, so like you could take a field trip to do this, or you could send your kids out with their families so that it could be a family outing um, to be able to get to know their community a little bit better. And you'll find all kinds of stuff. Almost every city has a lot of sort of different ways to express um, their history uh, and a little bit about their culture. So I'm, I'm certain you'll be able to find lots of really great things all around. So what I wanna show you is uh, how you can actually take this from being just, we're gonna go out and we're gonna shoot pictures to making this a project that helps share more about your community and where you live, uh, and also gives your students the opportunities to be able to practice photography skills, design skills, also how to utilize technology like um, presentations, maybe even spreadsheets, which we're gonna look at today, um, how to create their own maps, and then also how to use other tools like Adobe Spark, which we're gonna take a look at as well. So let's start um, by taking a look at Google Drive. Hopefully you have access to Google Drive with your school. Um, that would be under the G Suite or Google Apps for Education. It is completely free. So if you don't know about that, ask your school IT department or your principal to see if you have access to that. And if you don't at your school, definitely a good, a good time to have that conversation with them. But if not, you can also set up a personal account, your own Google account, to be able to do this. But I highly recommend using uh, a school account if you're able to get one. Once you do have a Google Drive account, you can actually create presentations like the one you see on my screen here. Now I'm going to go ahead and present this so that you can see what we're looking at. So what I've done in Google Slides um, is create a template. And Google Slides can be used for more than just doing presentations. And in this case, I'm using it to be able to create a template for the students to be able to upload their work, their finding. And in my template, I basically just set it up to where they would be able to insert the image and then add a title, the artist information, the location, so the address is crucial, right? In case we want to share this with people so they know where to find this information uh, or go out and shoot themselves, and then a brief reflection. Now I have a couple of different examples here I'm just going to quickly show you. So here's a one-to-one -one, a square uh, version of this in case you are wanting to upload, let's say, for example, to Instagram. It gives you that one-to-one -one ratio to, to fit perfectly in the square that shows up on the Instagram profile account. Uh, you can also choose to do something different, and I'll show you in a second how you can do different shapes here. But in this template, the students would be able to, of course, replace that gray box that you saw there on the left with the actual image in that perfect square. And that's really cool. Uh, and here again, um, you see the, the title, the artist information, etc. Now you can choose what you want to require the students to do, but here's an example where the students would, in this case, link um, here to the artist. So this could link to that artist webpage or maybe their social accounts. I've also linked the address so that this pops open in a Google map to actually show the physical address. And again, here's a sort of like a brief description. So I have a couple of examples like that. This is just kind of a really great way um, to be able to showcase how you can um, use that particular um, uh, template. Here's another one that is a, more in a rectangle. So imagine this being like a six by four picture. So a lot of your, um, when you're taking pictures, if you're taking them horizontally, this is what um, you would get. So this is where you would drop that, that image in if you've taken horizontal shots. Um, and again, same thing. So you add the artist, location info, etc. 
Um, just a couple of extras that I have here on the list as examples. The other one would be a uh, more like if you're taking a uh, portrait uh, mode. Um, so this is long. It's still um, the same size as the previous one, except this time it's four by six, making it long. Um, and the idea is the same thing, right? You've got title artist location. So my recommendation if you do this is to actually have all three um types of of image sort of templates right so that you can drop in whether you took a square photo or you took a horizontal or vertical shot and this way you've got that set up for your students to be able to drop in their images so i really like that um, you can pretty much customize your slide however you want but that's going to work really well for your students to be able to submit their work for everyone to be able to see everybody else's work um, which is really really cool so everyone can have access to the same presentation to drop in all of their work now we're going to take it a step further um, and i want to show you that to bring all of this easily together i personally like google photos as a way to organize all of the photos in one location in one album that can be shared with all of your students for all of them to add their photos into one album and that's really nice that's just sort of an extra tool that you can look into to see if you want to use that but now that you have all that information collected in your document the title the picture um, the artist information the location we can take this to a whole different level, and that's by using My Maps, um, which is a Google map tool that's built in and at part of your Google for Education account or even a personal account. So all you have to do is go to mymaps.google.com, um, or you could just Google that, and it'll take you to that page. And if you're logged in, it'll let you start to create your own map, which is what you see here. This is the end result, which is a map that I've created. And I'm going to zoom out here so that you can see um, all of these pin drops and the stars and the hearts. Those are all created by the entries that the students would be putting together. So the way that a my map, work, my map works is you're entering the data into a spreadsheet, whether it be a Google Sheet, um, it could be a Microsoft uh, spreadsheet as well. Um, whatever you have, maybe a, C CS a, C a CSV file, you can import that as well. And so all you really need is are the basics. You need the name of what you're going to call that painting or mural or sculpture, and then the address in order to be able to pin it onto the map itself. And once you've imported that information, it'll drop all that information in there for you. In addition to that, though, my map lets you actually select a different icon for it, plus it lets you change the color and even add an image. So for example, here, um, I already have uh, all of my data in here and I've got this one mural called When You're Strange. And so I can change it to any color based on however you wanna create a, a label for your um, different um, murals and, and uh, sculptures and things like that that you're bringing in. So you can totally decide how you wanna do this. I've designated the star yellow to pretty much be everything. The blue pin drop is meant to be a mural that is specific to Austin. So it would say something like, I'm here and it would have the state of, of you know Texas maybe with like a pin drop on Austin, or it might just say Austin in big letters. And so the pin, the blue pin drop is meant specifically for Austin stuff. And then I have some that are marked in red with a heart, which are the more popular ones. And so I wanted to designate those here as well. But for this one, when you're strange, I just wanna leave, uh, I wanna mark it as yellow, which I have it, and then I put a star. And then perhaps I also wanna add the actual image. So when I went actually out there to shoot this, um, I want to go find that picture. And so I have, like I said earlier, I'm using Google Photos, which allows me to get to all of those images. And they're already organized in there in a folder, so I don't have to go scout, you know, for it, you know, in multiple places. So that's why I like to use um, Google Photos because it, it keeps all of my stuff together. And in this case, I've gone from my photos to my uh, Austin Street Art. Um, photo walk album so all of my stuff is in here now mind you i take a ton of stuff which is what you're seeing on the screen now and so i'm scrolling through to find uh the artwork that i'm looking for which is uh when uh the i think it was when you're strange so let's go ahead and uh find that and if i don't find it quickly i'll just drop in whatever for now not a big deal i can change it later um oh here we go so when you're strange is the artwork that we're looking for for this particular um 
this particular pinpoint. So we're going to select it. And now it's going to add it. I'm going to click on save. So now when people actually go view this, let's go back to the example really quick. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to, I'm just refreshing that so it picks up on those changes. It might take a second sometimes. So this may not actually work out right away, but let's take a look. All right. So when you're strange, da, 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 here we go. So when you're strange, here it is. So this is what people would see when I share my map um, with people. So they go there, they click on it, they see the name, they have the address, there's the pinpoint. And when I click on it, on the map itself, it'll pop up. Oh, it's got my annotation tools, there we go. Oh, it doesn't like it because it has my annotation tool selected. But when you click on it, which is what we had earlier, it would be able to pull up the photo just like it did here. Um, and that's really cool because it adds that extra layer of people being able to see, well, what am I going to go shoot? Like, do I really like this sign? Do I not? Do I want to make the trip out there to take a picture of this or not? And so that's sort of an added element. So I love my maps because it allows you to share your student work, make this count, be a part of of um, elevating the your community and showcasing what it's all about with the culture and the traditions and the history. Um, and this is a way in which you can share this with the world, which, which is why I love um, using this particular tool. Now, wrapping it all up, uh, I'm gonna show you another tool that I like to use, which is Adobe Spark. Um, now you can do a lot of really cool things with Adobe Spark. It is available for education. So you can get it for free for all of your students. Um, and you just want to go to spark.adobe.com forward slash edu to get all the information. Um, and to get that set up, you will have to have an administrator um, help you um, get all that situated. But once that's set up, that means that you and all of your students will have access to use Adobe Spark from their computers. Um, you can also use it from your tablets or even your mobile phones, which makes it way, way easy to actually piece these things together. Now, Adobe Spark comes with several different tools. You can actually use this to create um, uh, graphics. Um, it could be for social media. It could be for uh, maybe for projects. Maybe you're building a poster, things like that. You can also do videos. So you can actually have images, video footage, text all into one and create sort of like a video uh, compilation or a documentary, things like that. And you can also create web pages, which is something like what you see on the screen now. This is what I created for this photo walk um, that I took here in Austin, Texas. You can add your images, you can add your text that you've pieced together. And when you get to the individual um, uh, shots that you've taken of street art and murals, here's where we've added the title, the artist, the location. This should seem familiar because basically what I did was take the content that we compiled together in this particular um, slide deck and then just added it directly on here too our site. And this is important because you want your kids to have a space where they can create their content, uh, fix their mistakes, where they can get feedback because you can give feedback via comments on a Google slide. And once you're ready, the, the data is ready, the content is ready. Now it's time to actually turn it into a piece of artwork, which is what you see here. And I love this because in, in, um, in Adobe Spark page, it makes your content look like you spend hours and hours and hours making it professional like this to where things glide on the page, you've got buttons, you've got links, but Adobe Spark page does a lot of that magic for you. You just have to make some simple decisions about how you want your data to be presented on the page. So lots of flexibility, which is great because your kids get to choose and decide what they're gonna do and how they're gonna build their page. So they get a lot of input, a lot of creative um, um, sort of flexibility that you can give them. So they've, they've got a lot of room to really kind of shine in, in this particular tool. Um, and of course, in this case, as I said, we were bringing everything together. You can even link with a button option uh, to your map that we created separately. So now you have that um, also on here. So it all comes together in Adobe Spark. I love how this tool allows you to create a professional look for your content. Anyway, you guys, I hope you liked this idea. I was uh, thinking of ways to get out, out of the house, onto the community, and really connect to my city in a way that allows me not just to learn more myself, but also share all of this with the world. I hope you enjoyed that.